Welcome to episode 224. Tonight on Book Chat, I'm interviewing voiceover actor and audiobook narrator Tom Jordan. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by Audiobooks.com. New customers get one free audiobook when using our promo code AUDIOSHELF. You just need to enter the code AUDIOSHELF on the sign-up page, then click Apply, then fill out the rest of your account info. Support this podcast by using our code AUDIOSHELF and get your first audiobook free. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, I'm so glad you're listening. Here on Book Chat, we get bookish with roundtable book discussions, book recommendation lists, interviews, and more. Be sure to check out shelfaddiction.com for even more content. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about today's interview guest. Tom Jordan stumbled upon voice acting in 1994 through a friend who worked for a local L.A. radio station. When podcasting started in 95, Tom jumped on the chance to build a modest home studio and he created his own shows without having to take away from his family or job. One of these podcasts, The Unreal OC, he did with his wife Elizabeth, and there are still dozens of hilarious episodes you can check out online at www.theunrealoc.com. Tom started recording audiobooks in May of 2017. So while he's a newcomer to the field, he is no stranger to narration. Tom has produced all 30 of the books he's narrated. They can be found on Audible using the link below. You can listen to some samples of his narration as well as his commercial demo on his website, www.tomvoiceover.com. If you'd like to comment on something you've heard during today's episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction, or call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. The links for everything related to today's episode are below in the show notes. Hey, Tom, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tamara. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Let's jump into this because we have a lot to talk about with a little bit of time. Are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. So tell me a little bit how you got into audiobook narration. Sure. Um, I started in voiceover in general back in the early 90s, um, way back before the internet was around and where you had to drive. uh, I'm in Southern California, but not real close to LA. So there was a lot of driving to Burbank just for auditions. I mean, you can imagine how many auditions you have to do and how few actual gigs you get from those. So I was doing a lot of driving and not getting a lot of work. Um, The internet came around and I started uh, doing that. So we're flash forwarding about eight years and I started doing that. In the meantime, I had a, a children on the way and I was married and um, I realized that this was not going to be a full-time job. So I started doing it part-time. Um, in the mid 2000s, I kind of moved away from voiceover and got into podcasting for about five or six years and had uh, several podcasts. And then just two years ago, I started getting back into voiceover because I started doing voiceover for my work. Um, I'm a marketing communications writer and marketing writer in general. And um, well, they started using me because of my voiceover background to do a lot of promos and uh, e-learning and training video narration for my work. And I thought, well, mm-hmm. instead of making this seem like a chore, why don't I, why don't I make it seem like practice for moonlighting, as you will, um, for uh, for voiceover? So that's how that started a couple of years ago. Um, my mentor was doing audiobooks, and he kept encouraging me to jump onto ACX which is audiobook creation exchange owned by audible. And that's where narrators um, hook up with authors. And um, it's kind of like a dating service, but it's, but it's for <laughs> narrators hooking up with yeah. authors that need to have um, narration done. So I did that, um, got a couple of books right off the bat and it's just been kind of nonstop for the past 14 months or so that I've been doing um, audiobook narration. So that's kind of, but I really love audiobook narration because instead of doing a hundred um, auditions for one uh, gig um, in a pay to play situation, um, I'm finding that the ratio is much higher for me to be able to get the books that I'm looking for. Um, and also when I'm in the morning, 
recording, I'm not just throwing auditions out into the ether. I'm actually recording a chapter that's going to be going into a book that will someday be in somebody's iPod or phone that they're listening. Sounds like audiobook narration is a lot more satisfying than just voiceover work. Very good way of putting it. For me, it is. For me, it is. I really do enjoy it. And I'm kind of a natural storyteller to begin with. So it just kind of clicked. Everything gelled with the narration. And um, since I've got a day job that pays the mortgage, um, I can do audiobook narration in the margins and continue on um, uh, just plugging away with it. And I just absolutely love it. Okay. So since you're doing that kind of as a side gig, do you uh, put extra effort in finding books that you're actually, you know, thinking you may enjoy? You know, are you nitpicky a little bit because this isn't your full-time job? I am. I am doing that now. Yes. I think that even in the beginning, I got some great, sweet, uh, historical romances that I did that were that, uh, and I would still do some of those too. They were just really great books too. They were easier to read than a really, you know, um, intense, complicated thriller with 19 different accents, for instance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. starting with those was great. I also hooked up with a guy um, named Justin Johnson, who was a children's writer, um, but he jumped off the children's genre and into deep, dark, thrillers, very, very short stories, but he did, I did about 10 of those for him. And these are really short, so they don't sell really well because on Audible, nobody really wants to throw their $14.99 uh, credits each month that they get into a 20 minute book. Um, mm -hmm. But they had great covers. They were really well written and um, they had uh, great characters that I was able to, again, kind of help evolve my, my narration skills by doing those. So I did several of those at the beginning too. Recently I've been doing thrillers and mysteries and I just, I just love them. So that's kind of where I'm at now. So would you say thrillers and mysteries are your favorite genre to narrate then out of everything? Out of everything that I've done so far, which um, isn't real expansive, um, but it includes romance and um, a couple of biographies, nonfiction and, um, uh, I did a children's book as well. So yeah, and in addition to those, thrillers are, are are right up there at the top. Wonderful. Do you listen to audiobooks for fun in your own time? I do. I do. And more and more I've been listening to audiobooks from narrators that uh I aspire to someday maybe get even in the same ballpark. Um so uh so yeah, so there's there's been um, uh, Ray Porter is somebody that I've been listening to a lot of lately is the Joe Ledger series uh, by um, Jonathan Mayberry is um, I think I got that last name right, but it is it's the Joe Ledger series that he does. It's just amazing. So listening to him, of course, R.C. Bray, um, Johnny Heller, you know these these people that are kind of the superstars of of audio narration. Um, but there's a lot of good ones, too, that are out there. There's a lot of talent out there. But I think, you know, because I'm kind of a natural mimic anyway, and I don't want to become, I don't want to sound like these people, but you take you take bits of what they do really well, and you try to incorporate them. You take, oh, I like the way they do their pauses between whatever, or I like the way that um, their inflections are when they're this type of a character. And so you kind of piece things together. And I bring that into my toolkit because I'm still developing and I think probably always will be. But listening to the best of the best um, right now is kind of where I'm going. Yeah, I agree with you. There are a lot of really talented narrators out there because as an audiobook listener, I definitely every every month I come across new narrators I've never heard from before. And they're all amazing. They all really do a good job. Right, right. And I'll make right. sure that I, I got the author's name. It's Jonathan Mayberry. I may have said Jonathan Bayberry. But anyway, that was for the okay. Joe Ledger series, just, just for the record. All right. So what about your dream author? Do you have one that like you love their writing and one day you would love to do an audiobook for them? Dean Koontz is right up there. Um, I'd love to do that. Stephen King. Um, there's there's quite a few, but all within that that genre. And I, I guess I guess Dean Koontz sticks out because he's he was probably the first audiobook that I listened to. Um, I don't know, ten years ago or more. And um, because he's been um, he's had his books turned into audiobooks way before Audible was around. Um, and and I've listened to 
just about every one of his books. And he's got great narration going on all these things, but I've always thought, boy, wouldn't that be great to be able to do that? So that's, that's the, yeah. sticks out in my mind, but Hey, um, I'm open. So, <laughs> okay. So since you have, you know, a lot of experience in marketing and things, I thought it would be fun for you to share some tips to both authors using ACX as well as narrators looking for work on ACX. Uh, do you want to, let's just jump into that. You want to start with your, Top couple of tips for authors that are looking for narrators. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there are uh, a couple of books out there um, that you can actually get as an author to kind of give you the tips and the right way to move into audiobooks. Um, I'm actually doing a, a talk in early September to the California Writers Club Long Beach chapter on, uh, and this is independent authors primarily moving into audiobooks. So I'm um, this is good, good prep for that. Um, there's um, a tremendous opportunity within audiobooks, and and some of the things that that you want to do. Um, first of all, you want to be able to choose your narrator wisely. Um, if you're doing a royalty share, um, which is uh, one of the two ways that you get paid off of ACX, if that's the direction you're going, um, royalty share you will get 20% as an author, the narrator will get 20% and um, audible will end up with 60%. So you're splitting that with, with the narrator. You want to make sure that the narrator that you choose is going to be a good business partner, that they are really good with communication, that they understand what it takes to market a book, um, an audio book. Once you have it up on audible, that they continue to stay in contact with you. I love working with authors and independent authors in particular. Um, it's just one of my favorite things to do. And I've constantly got conversations going with them on Facebook Messenger and so forth. And there's there's um, there's a lot of Facebook groups that help you to promote your books. And there has to be an ongoing conversation with your narrator. Now, there is a school of thought with some narrators that um, once you've done the book, it's, it's up to the author to or the writer or to do the promotion and you can just step back. I'm not a believer in that. I think that there's a lot of benefits as a narrator um, to work with the author um, to, um, and I'll move into that when we get to the narrator's point of view, but really choosing the narrator is very important. Don't choose the narrator based on when you want the book to be finished. In other words, if you're in a hurry and you've got a great narrator that did a great audition, um, don't think to yourself, well, I, this person can't get to it for two months. Um, I need to choose somebody that can do it quicker because I can't wait for my book to be turned into an audio book and listen to it come alive. Um, think about the fact that in three months, either way, your book is going to be up on audible. Are you going to be proud of it with the narrator that you've chosen? Or are you going to be cringing when you listen to it? And that means your right. audience will be cringing too. So either way, look ahead for your six months and think it's going to be up either way. You know, um, how is it going to? reflect on what I've done and the choices I've made in choosing a narrator. Um, there's a ton mm -hmm. of stuff that I could go into. I've got an hour talk, like I said, already in my head, but that's kind of the biggest thing I would say would be to just choose your narrator carefully and uh, make sure that they communicate well and that they're willing to work with you in marketing. Well, I am a very huge advocate of audiobooks, if you can't tell already. And I've come across a lot of indie authors, even small press authors, that don't choose to use an audiobook. And I want to know from you how you can convince them that they need it. We want audiobooks. Yeah, I think that, you know, from what I've heard and from from my experiences with working with independent authors the main stumbling block the main roadblock for for them is the technology they're they're afraid that well first of all they're afraid it's going to cost them money and it it really doesn't it doesn't cost anything acx doesn't charge to move your book um into it from amazon so you have to have an amazon presence of a kindle book or soft cover um pretty sure it has to be in Kindle format. Um, but uh, it doesn't cost anything to say, hey, I'm going to list it on ACX and audition narrators. So there's there's that. So there's there's no cost involved right off the bat with that. Um, there's um, there's also a, it, does it, is it going to require any technical knowledge? You know, I'm a writer. I, so I still use a typewriter. You know, what is it going to take for me to be able to? Um, so the technical part isn't really anything. The, the narrator produces this and that 
requires technical skill on their end. All you have to do as a, as an author is listen to the MP3 files that um, are just a click away on your computer and make sure that everything sounds the way that it should. And you're golden, you know, at the end, and then you click, I'm done. And within a week or two, your audiobook is up on audible. So yeah, I mean, as far as convincing them goes, I don't know. There, there are a number of roadblocks, I guess, you know, too, we've, they don't understand that, you know, audiobook, the audiobook market is growing between depending mm-hmm. on what you read, 20 to 30% every single year, year after year. Um, you do need, you're right. You do need to have a presence in audio and, um, and it's quite simple to do and it can be achieved, um, in a weekend really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like authors who choose that, you know, not to go the audiobook route, like you said, the market is growing. They are missing out. They're missing out on people that could enjoy their story that only listen to audiobooks because they're so busy or, you know, they're really missing audience by not doing that. They are, they are. And, um, audiobooks can be money makers for them. Um, there are plenty of examples where the audiobook makes quite a bit, um, sells quite a bit more than the, uh, than the Kindle book, for example. Um, there's mm-hmm. that commute. I mean, we've come, we've come so far with, with listening to books in general, the barriers to entry have broken down um, primarily because it's so easy for people now to listen to audiobooks. And maybe that's another thing that, that authors um, need to understand is that, you know, you look back even 12 years ago, um, there were uh, still cassettes with books on them. Um, maybe, maybe 15 years ago for cassettes and beyond. So there were books on tape and you had to juggle cassettes to put into your car. And how many cassettes does it take for an 11 hour book? Um, then there were CDs. We moved into that. You still had to mess with CDs. You got an hour per CD and you still had to swap them out and got a little bit easier. And then we still had to have a CD. I'm thinking primarily like for commuters and people that are listening while driving, but it could be um, even walking around cleaning around your house or whatever, wherever your passive activity that you might be doing, listening to it. Um, then all of a sudden now it's on everybody's phone. I've got over 40 audiobooks on my phone and I can listen to my car because all the cars nowadays are Bluetooth capable and they mm-hmm. made that way if they're not already very cheaply and bang, you've just got, you've got audiobooks anywhere you want them. So the barriers to entry have been broken down and that's, helped to increase the sales and the, it's just like anything else. It's like going to the gym. If you know that it's just going to take you a half an hour to park, how often are you going to go? But if, if it doesn't take you any time, so all the barriers to entry need to be broken down and, and they really have gotten to that point right now. Wonderful. Okay, let's switch gears. I don't know if we hit all top three, but we spent a good amount of time on that. So let's talk about the narrators um, for those looking for work in audiobook narration, do you have any suggestions for them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's one big tip that I like to, to provide. Um, and that is kind of a, something that I do, um, when there's a book that I really want that I have narrated that I've done an audition for. Um, I, first of all, I, I always use that little notes space in ACX, um, to, um, to say, thank you for this opportunity or thank you for your time, um, and consideration. I know because I'm also an author and I've posted a book on ACX and gone through the audition process that you don't see that necessarily as an author. Those are kind of hidden. You've got the audition, you click on that, you go to the next one, you keep going, but you don't necessarily see that little note left by the narrator. So that's one thing to think about. So, but I always leave that anyway as a narrator when I leave an audition. But in addition to that, um, I also write the um, rights holder a note. So I send using the ACX messenger service. Um, I send them a real quick note. Hey, thanks. Sounds like a great book. And what I say is um, if there's any other portion of your manuscript that you'd like to hear as an audition, I'd be happy to provide that as an additional audition for you. Um, Perhaps something with more dialogue or different characters or, and here's the, here's the tip. Um, perhaps there's a favorite part of the book that you'd like your favorite part of the book that you'd Mm -hmm. like to hear because every author has got a favorite part of their book and there's a very good chance that it's not your favorite part. It's just something personal to them. 
they really like to hear their books come to life and to hear their favorite part of the book, which probably isn't the part of the manuscript that they provided for the audition. Um, mm -hmm. Give them that opportunity to hear that brought to life. And that is something that I've done and so far have had three out of three authors um, choose me for their books based upon, partially I'm sure, based upon the fact that they just loved the fact that I asked for that and that I was willing to provide an additional additional audition. Um, it takes 25 minutes to do a five minute audition and edit it and send it off. That's something you can spare if there's a book that you really want. So, right. so that's, that's what I would say. There's, there's a lot of tips for narrators. Um, I never give performance tips because I'm <laughs> so new, but as far as, um, looking at ACX, choosing, um, books, uh, to narrate and that type of thing. I love, uh, I love working with new narrators that are just, you know, in shock by the number of, of options that there are for the books out there and how do they choose stay away from the, how to tie your shoe books, the, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> one hour, you know, books that are just thrown up there. Basically, um, they're almost spam, um, in a sense, because they're people that, that write these really tiny, um, Kindle books and want to get audio books made out of them just to try to generate income or whatever their motivation right. might be. So you stay away from those. Look for quality books. There's nothing wrong with starting out with an hour book when you're just beginning. And, um, of course you want to get into that six to 10 sweet spot of um, finished hours, um, whenever you can. And as soon as you can, because that's what people buy and beyond 10 hours as well. People like to get their money's worth when they're buying things from their subscription to audible. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to start out with a six hour book that can be quite discouraging when you're in a booth and you're just learning the ropes. So choose quality books that are shorter when you're starting out and move as quickly as you can up to the longer ones based upon how you, uh, how you feel and uh, your skill level. That's good advice because there's actually a ton of novellas and short stories and anthologies, all kinds of things that may be shorter in life, but have quality that you're looking for. Absolutely. One last thing on advice. Do you have any advice for those that are brand new who have never, ever done an audio book, but they want to, like you made that transition. What do you recommend that they do to see if they're even able to sustain that type of career? Look up. Sean Pratt's So You Want to Be an Audiobook Narrator on YouTube. Um, that's a good three or four minute video. Sean kind of gives you an idea of what it takes. Um, Sean does talk about sitting in a booth for quite a while reading, and that does that is what it takes. You have to build up to that stamina. Um, so that's a good place to start. Go to um, be familiar with Facebook and um, in, in the groups that deal with audiobooks. And there's quite a few of them out there. Go to Audiobook Lovers, which is a Facebook group that I, um, co admin with Barbara Goss, who was the first author that I worked with, um, when I first got into narration. And, uh, she and I have remained friends over the past year or more. And, um, that's a good place to go because you've got narrators, um, you've got audiobook listeners, and you've got authors that are all part of that group. And we encourage people to ask questions and for newbies saying, hey, how do I get started? We have absolutely no problem with that. You're going to get 25 responses in 24 hours of people that give you ideas on how to get started. ACX, you want to set up an account on acx.com. And again, that's the audiobook creation exchange um, that is owned by Audible, that's owned by Amazon. And um, ACX doesn't cost you anything to get started. You do have to have a couple of samples of uh, reading an audiobook. Now that can be a book of your choosing. It can be a, a one that's in the public domain, or it can be a portion of one um, that's uh, that's a popular book that's already out there. There isn't too much concern, and I don't want to give any bad advice here, but a lot of people use popular novels. Um, I'd stay away from the Dan Browns and the, the Jean Le Carre's and the really popular ones, but you can choose a portion of a book and read it. Um, don't read The Martian. Everybody's going to compare you to R.C. Bray if you do that. Right, um, you right. Portion of a book or choose something from the public domain if you want to do that, which is um, books that are in the 70 to 100 year old range. Um, and read uh, five minutes into a microphone, edit it, um, send it 
go on to audiobook lovers or another book, uh, another audiobook group on Facebook and ask for somebody to listen to it so they can give you feedback on it before you post it. If you're that brand new, coaching is hugely important. Um, there are a bunch of coaches out there. Um, I just was coached yesterday with Johnny Heller, my first time one on one with him. Been to a couple of his workshops and um, was blown away by how much I learned in the hour that I spent with him. He's great for newbies as well. There's a lot of different paths to go. Uh, there's a lot of peer, um, there, there are peer uh, critique groups as well where you can get good feedback from, from your peers. So I hope that isn't. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> but yeah, um, being new in this, just your best shot. You're going to get a lot of opinions if you just go onto um, onto Facebook and you go into one of the groups like Audiobook Lovers, um, and and just ask that question, and you're going to get and, and you can start the conversation with other narrators that way and get really mm-hmm. solid advice on where to start. Excellent. Okay, so let's switch gears here. And we're going to listen to a snippet from One Eyed Jack, which is an audiobook uh, that was released earlier this year. We're going to listen to the quick snippet, and then we're going to talk about that. I make my living by keeping secrets. Actually, I make it by letting others keep theirs. That's right. I'm that guy. The blackmailer. The extortionist. The guy you never see and wish you had never heard from. I'm the one who sees into the dark corners of your soul, the parts of your life you want to remain hidden. Fancy yourself a religious man who attends church every Sunday, but who has a propensity for porn shops the other six days of the week. Don't worry, the congregation will never know, as long as you keep tithing into my collection plate. Let's call it a sin tax. All right. So now that we've heard that snippet, Tom, why don't you tell me a little bit about what we've just heard? Sure. Um, that's the beginning of One-Eyed Jack. That's the uh, first book in the series written by uh, Christopher J. Lynch. He's a local writer here in Southern California. Great, great thriller writer, great mystery writer. Um, One-Eyed Jack, uh, his name is John Sharp, also known as One-Eyed Jack. He is a professional blackmailer. I love this book and I love the series. I just finished the second one in the series, Russian roulette, um, narrating that for, for Chris. And that's, uh, that's going to be available in a couple of weeks on audible. Um, and, uh, he's got at least two more books, uh, in the series. So a professional blackmailer, you know, you think private eye, you think detective story, you think true crime. I've never experienced a story before in a professional blackmailer. And, um, one eye Jack is, his, his, in, in a despicable profession, if you want to, you know, elevate it to that level of, uh, of a name. Um, uh, he has a heart of gold. Um, he treats people well, um, regardless of, of what he does, uh, for a living and how he makes his money. Um, it's, it's, he gets tangled up in a lot of crazy, um, conflicts and adventures in one eye jack um there's there's love interests there's uh it's just it's just a fun listen um it was a blast to narrate that was the uh the most fun i had had narrating a book up to that point when i when i clicked i'm done with that book i was just like oh this was so such a blast and i was thrilled to be able to do the second one as well which is just as I don't know if I should use the word riveting because that really is dependent on the listener, but I think it was, it was a blast to read and it's so well written. And, uh, Chris has really got, um, really got a good thing going with that series. So, so yeah, it was, it was fun. That's available on Audible when I Jack is and, uh, um, check it out. A villain with a heart is like, is very different. You know, I, you don't hear that. Well, I don't read that trope a lot where you have a really bad, you know, someone doing bad things who's really a good person. And that's what it sounds like, Jack. Right. And I mean, you know, everybody that he's busting um, and blackmailing is doing something really wrong in turn. So he's, he's not a hero. He's an anti-hero in a sense, Mm. because he's, you know, there's people that are, cheating on their wives or cheating the IRS or doing whatever he's busting them for it, blackmailing them, getting money back in return. But they're the ones that are really doing the wrongdoing. He wouldn't be making his money. So it's a really great complicated um, uh, 
trope in a sense, but fun to listen to and and just just it just breezes right by. It's really it's good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, sounds good. Is it funny? Sounds like it's got a little bit of humor. Got humor in it too. Yeah, yeah. And there's a he's got a real wry sense of humor and um and the characters that he meets and the people that have done wrong and and how he um gets tangled up in their lives and so forth. Yeah, a lot of lot of good stuff there. Well, you guys definitely check out One Eye Jack. You'll find a link in the show notes. You'll also find a link for the entirety of Tom's U.S. available audiobooks on Audible. So if you'd like to check that out as well. Uh, but let's change uh, gears again. I've heard you've been nominated for a Roan Award. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just found that out a couple weeks back. Um, yeah, that was nice. Um, so author Aubrey Wynn wrote this great book called Dante's Gift. and um, got voted on and brought up to the level of finalist on um, Indescribe uh, magazine and I'm sorry, in detail magazine, which is for independent authors and publishers. And then in describe is the conference that they have every year And this year it's in Burbank and they have the Rhone awards, uh, which I'm going to attend because I'm local enough to Burbank. And I think that's going to be a blast. So there's four other audiobooks in the audiobook category that most of the awards go to books themselves, not audiobooks, but they do have this year an audiobook category. And uh, out of the four books, uh, Dante's Gift is one of them. And I narrated that for Aubrey um, just back last November, I think. And it's a sweet uh, romance. As a blast to narrate, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to be nominated for that. Oh, well, good luck. Thank you. Awesome. So what other projects do you have on the horizon? I have, um, I just accepted an offer yesterday to, uh, to narrate a book by Dwayne Alexander Smith, who, um, who wrote the book 40 Acres. Um, and this book that I'm going to narrate is called The Unkind Hours. And it's a thriller, shocker. <laughs> um, and, um, <laughs> it just looks fantastic. I just, when I, when I read the synopsis of it, I was like, Oh, I've got to get this book. And again, I, I did the audition. I contacted him through the ACX messenger. I said, Hey, um, if you decide that I'm the right voice for this talent, um, Hopefully we can work on it because um, I've got uh, another project that's coming up. I've got the third book in, uh, in another thriller series that I've got to do in July. Um, uh, so I've got to, um, I've got to be able to do that <laughs> and in between all these other things and have the full-time job and have three kids and a wife and two dogs. Mm. So yeah, um, full plate. Uh, was willing to work with me on the date and I'm just going to have to work my rear end off this summer um, to get this book done. Cause it's, um, uh, it's an eight hour book and eight hour book to somebody who's doing audiobooks full time is, um, you know, six days of work for me. It's a month and a half. So I'll, I'll get it done. And I'm really looking forward to that. So that's, that's going to be coming out. Um, look for that in the fall. That's, um, the unkind hours. Wonderful. Okay. So I guess we're going to end things there. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today, Tom. Thanks, Tamara, so much. Absolutely. So you can find all of Tom's social media links below in the show notes. If you'd like to contact him, feel free. Thanks for streaming and downloading today's episode. And until next time, take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that love pop culture, from books and audiobooks to TV and movies. I'll see you next time here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast.